Trying to get a good experience in VR with Microsoft Flight Simulator has been something of a long-term goal of mine. For years, I had struggled to get acceptable performance and quality. I'd spend countless hours adjusting settings and testing with various tools and third-party software. But even at its best, I was always still thinking about what sacrifices I was making in graphical fidelity to be in VR. All the settings I had to turn down just to get this pixelated, blurry experience. For a long time, I had to accept that VR was just not a great option for me until I could afford a more powerful graphics card. But during that time, I'd found what I think is a pretty decent alternative, which still let me put my VR headset to good use and get an immersive experience without having to pay that VR performance penalty. So I thought I would share my method because I don't really see this being suggested or put out there much. And I think this is still really relevant as VR can still be a struggle for many people. And I think this is a really valid alternative. In fact, even after upgrading my rig and getting good performance in VR now, I still use this method mainly for recording because capturing video in VR is like a whole other mess. So let me explain what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take full advantage of head tracking in the sim. Um, every VR headset does this. It's just what allows us to move our head um, in and out and lean in and move around the cockpit. Um, but also, we're going to use software in the headset that's going to project your desktop um, as a giant wraparound display in front of your face, um, which will completely envelop your entire field of view. So this is getting quite a bit more immersive. Lastly, if you have something like a Quest 3, um, a headset with cameras, we're also uh, going to take advantage of camera pass-through mode so you can keep an eye on all the hardware. It's going to be visible below the display. You can see your throttle quadrant, flight instrument panels, all that good stuff. Now, let me be clear, this is not just like VR. Microsoft Flight Simulator is not rendering a stereoscopic image in the game, so you don't get that same sense of depth. That is why we're not taking such a big performance hit with this method. But it is probably the next best thing and generally a big improvement over just playing on your desktop monitor. Also, this guide is really based around Oculus headsets. That's what I have now and that's what I'm most familiar with. But if you have a different headset, uh, this should still be perfectly achievable. So if you want to do this, first thing you'll need to do is get your headset connected to your PC. I won't spend a great deal of time detailing these steps as you're probably familiar with this if you've reached this point already. I'm going to be showing off both the MetaQuest Link software for PC and the virtual desktop options. But do note that the pass-through option is only available with virtual desktop from what I can tell. So go ahead and install and set up one of these two options. Also, if you are going virtual desktop, go ahead and download Steam and SteamVR as well. We'll need that just to get head tracking working with virtual desktop. If you're using the MetaQuest Link cable or the AirLink now, just get everything connected up and running and enter PC VR mode on the headset. You should now see the Oculus Dash Home environment, and from this little toolbar below, select the monitor icon. You now have your desktop display in your headset, and you can use the grip button on the Oculus remote uh, and use the joystick to move around and resize the display so it fills your entire field of view. Now, in virtual desktop, you're greeted right away with a desktop display once you're connected. You can move and resize this in the same manner with the buttons above the display or we're holding the grip button on the controller. Make sure to go into the options on the desktop and select Steam VR under the OpenXR runtime. And that's it. And now for the head tracking, regardless of which method you've chosen, you'll need to download and install a free program online called OpenTrack. So let's go ahead and download that and install it here. If you're using MetaQuest Link software, select the Oculus runtime. And if you're using Virtual Desktop, just select Steam VR. Next, open Options, and under Shortcuts, set a key binding for Center. We'll need to use this periodically to recenter ourselves in the game, so pick some convenient button on your joystick or yoke and press Start. In MetaQuest Link, you may need to minimize this open track window in the headset to get your desktop display back. And if you're using Virtual Desktop and you hit Start on Open Track, it'll take you to Steam VR Home first, but just hit the menu button on the left controller and that'll take you back to your desktop. And then just run Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's it. You may want to play with the size and the position of the screen and the headset a little more, and perhaps turn off motion blur in the Microsoft Flight Simulator settings. With Virtual Desktop, you can change the environment to something more immersive, or this is where you would choose the pass-through mode instead. Remember, with Virtual Desktop, you do still have full access to the rest of your Oculus app, so you can put up a YouTube video or a website uh, next to you in your display. Play around with it and let me know what you think. If you're just not getting the experience you want in VR and you've pretty much given up at this point, I, I think this is a decent option um, You know, to at least hold you over until you get some better hardware. It's not VR, but it still does let you do something pretty cool with your VR headset in the game.